our last video, we talked about some things you may need to know if you're planning to pick up the Canon PowerShot V10 for yourself. If you haven't seen it, there should be a link somewhere around, but for today, it's going to be that promised vlogging attempt by me, so let's go! Good morning, friends. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful morning, and I guess we're vlogging. And I do have the Canon PowerShot V10 with me today, bare bones, as we talked about. And we're gonna go vlog, and I guess I'm taking you guys with me. So I've got a couple of things lined up today, and we're gonna go around and test the Canon PowerShot V10 in different scenarios. I do want to try it out in three things. I do want to try it out in bright light, which is right now. Maybe some indoor light, and of course, low light, so you get an idea of how this camera performs, how this camera performs, and what it's capable of. Let's go! Before we head out, we are gonna do some stabilization tests. It is turned on right now and it is on enhanced, but you do get a couple of options and I want you guys to see them side by side. starting to rain so I am going to head inside now I had so much planned for this morning but it's not happening but this is how we see it in uh, bright light I guess while the sun is still out you do get a nice exposed sky right there let's see how the ND filter will work coming from bright light we're gonna enter this dark room and it adjusts it does not adjust it's pretty bad let's wait oh it adjusts a little there it adjusts. That's as much I can do this morning. So it, it did start raining even if the sun is out. I'm gonna go get ready. We're gonna go out and do stuff. How do you end these things? I'm just gonna swipe. So I am in my car. I am in the parking lot where there's not a lot of light. Enough for my face as you can see. And it's looking not so bad in this display but we are going to test it out further I'm gonna do some errands and an event and you are gonna come with me let's go Accessories here. This has stabilization on it's not it's just mild. And we're gonna walk to the car. So far the footage is still looking pretty bright. I'm still so happy. It's so easy to use it and there's a lot of people who are just very interested in this camera. I have to say though that it is a, I am having a hard time uh, choosing where to look through the lens or through the screen right there. But the lens you should be looking at the lens. So we're gonna head back to the car. I have some errands. Hello! <laughs> Again, I'm gonna head back to the car. I have errands to do. I don't know if I'm gonna do them. Because traffic is about to start in like 30 minutes or so. Mm, we'll figure it out. Here comes the heavy traffic. Of Metro Manila. It's always traffic. 
21 minutes to travel 2.3 kilometers I don't know if that's acceptable to other people but it's pretty normal here well since it's pretty much a standstill right now let's talk about it this guy this camera so right now I have it propped up on a dash but this is as wide as it can get uh, right let me just adjust that and since it is squished up to the dash I cannot see the frame Ooh, I just saw it right now Ow. it's actually connected to my phone so I can see and control what's happening which is really cool for situations like this it adds a certain versatility to the camera because you can use the phone right here to frame your shot and to control certain um, to control certain functions yeah that's the word I'm looking for one thing I did notice though if you combine using the smartphone remote live plus shooting in 4k and if you're shooting long it does cut off because the temperature does get pretty hot I guess that's even in an air-conditioned car so that's pretty odd for me so that's uh, something you might have to consider that you can't use all those functions together at the same time that's why I keep checking my phone in case the recording stopped but it didn't it's fine see the temperature is already rising I don't know if you can see it but it's already rising and I guess it's telling me to stop and I'm at 52 seconds right now but I did come from like a minute or two minute recording from a while ago so I think I'm gonna stop this because it's about to stop it's like the meter is all the way up so don't use the combination of these three or maybe just be in a better air-conditioned room or if you have snow I guess that would be better we don't have snow so I'm almost home I'm letting the camera still cool by placing it against the vents of the air conditioning but now but now I'm almost out of battery I think it's also because I've been remote shooting for a good while. So that's a that's a tip. Bring a power bank or a charger or anything. I'm just gonna shut this off because safety first, right? I just got home. Oh look, it's a little tree. I just got home. So my. I ran out of battery it's still blinking right now plugged it in for like a minute or two just to see what I could get and this is what I could get so that was quite a drive we still have some testing to do for a low light and that's what you're gonna see next so see ya I guess hey the battery is still running considering I just plugged it in for like two minutes while I petted my cat who is now eating I'm actually just waiting for this to run out of juice because I wanted to see how long it would give me and it's nighttime now we're testing out the low light capabilities of the camera it's around 10 p.m. I'm walking around the city and there's not much people which is how I like it because that is the easiest way to vlog for me when there's no one around listening to me. Like, we are using the highest level of stabilization, means you're getting a crop in the photo using the kickstand as a grip also as well. It's not so low light, there are, it was, there's still a bit of light, the street lights are pretty bright, the streets are pretty bright, but it's looking good from my little display here. Of course we'll see something, we'll see it better on the bigger display. Find a place to prop this up and we'll talk more about the camera while you enjoy some more nighttime shots with more low light samples. Okay, so thoughts on the PowerShot V10. First, I know there are a lot of people who are not into this form factor and I understand that because it really isn't for everybody especially with the quality of smartphone cameras these days it's a question of why or why use this as good as smartphones are these days i still believe that there is no one that can truly repli truly replicate the quality of a dedicated camera i am one of those people i 
There are a few that come close, I'll give you that, but this is where I think the PowerShot V10 comes in. It really strikes a good balance of high quality captures and really, really good portability. I know what you're thinking, what about action cameras? What about all those tiny ones? But those are exactly what they're named after. They are action cameras. The PowerShot V10 is not an action camera. For me, it's an everyday vlogging camera, the kind of camera you bring to the mall with you to take photos with your friends or take videos with your family. It's the kind of camera you bring on road trips because you don't want something too complicated. And what makes it a really good vlogging camera, again this is all my opinion and the time that I've spent with it, what makes it a really good vlogging camera and not a good action camera is that you don't need, you actually don't, you can have but you don't need accessories to really make it work because right now it's literally bare bones. I have everything that I have right now is everything that came inside the box, including the little wrist strap that I've been able to use if I don't want to pocket it or if I want it really handy. But again, the tri the little kickstand and the little touchscreen flip screen right here is a godsend for self shooters like myself and especially vloggers, I would think, because it's just so easy to change all these parameters to see yourself which is kind of important because you do have to frame yourself it's not a question of vanity and this makes it easy and it makes it look a little bit more professional than just using a smartphone and speaking of smartphones i really like that you can have your smartphone with you and you don't need to sacrifice it while you're shooting so for example i do i am using my smartphone right now to have i can i'm using it to remote view i have you right there I can put my notes, I can check on my social media, I can do whatever without needing to stop recording. Apart from the hardware that it has, the, the wide lens, the touch, the touch screen, and that little kickstand that's ever so useful, it can also be used as a grip when you're doing vertical videos. I think what I also like about the Canon PowerShot V10 and something I would also hero to other people is its software support, the functionality that it's able to bring because of the technology that we have today. You do have a good set of mics on here. It's not perfect, but there are there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack so you can attach whatever audio device you need. Of course, there are cons because what device doesn't have? And, and in using this camera for about two weeks or so, I do have a couple of complaints like heat management could be a lot better when you're shooting in 4k plus remote live viewing but if you're doing a couple of functions all at the same time the the camera tends to shut down uh, faster and then i think i was able to clock in around two minutes of recording but recording 4k video with remote live shooting before the camera had to shut down by itself another would have to be again the lack of an optical zoom again i think this is a personal preference you can get away with the digital zoom but maybe in the next generation we'll have optical and i would absolutely love that battery life could be longer especially for a vlogging camera of course you can have compromises like not shooting in 4k not using remote live viewing but that's for me that's not using the camera to its fullest extent and it could be a waste although the 4k on this is quite beautiful i'd have to say that one inch sensor really works its magic oh the ui also i would like to mention that the ui does need a little bit work while it is very responsive especially the touch screen the icons can be a little bit small even for me who i don't really have that i don't my hands aren't that big i still miss touch the icon and i end up pressing other things that i didn't mean to press so for what it is and at its price it's a really good offering if you want to elevate your video and make it not look like a smartphone because again as good as smartphones are these days especially when it gets dark you can tell it's a smartphone so overall let's wrap things up here before we end this video question is would i recommend the powershot v10 it's a definite yes if you shoot content like this what do i mean if you shoot the everyday kind of content the vlogging content if you're if you do cooking content if you have pets that you just want to uh, shoot yourself with if you're doing get ready with me content even for sh vertical videos for, me, for shorts for reels for whatever platform you're on because it is super duper easy to use it is the best one of the best run and gun cameras i have used in a long while plus it's incredibly fun i would also recommend this for the content creators who are shooting on their phones but kind of want to elevate the look of their video without switching up to a heavier more intimidating camera to a more intimidating camera like those big bulky cameras because let's face it that's not for everyone someone some people just want to go out to shoot and have nice quality videos and this is that camera because i personally still think that a dedicated camera with its dedicated sensor and a dedicated lens will still give you better quality overall 
So I guess this has been running a little bit too long. Oop. I hit something. I have to get home and feed my cat and see Kevin. I'm excited to see them both. So if you haven't yet, you know the drill. Visit us at themoderncreatures.com. Subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Visit us on our socials and all that jazz. And I guess that's it for tonight.